Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, depending upon where you are. My name is Brian Harrison, and welcome to the Mastering Azure series from Pact Publishing. This particular video series is going to be focusing on platform as a service within Azure. Now, what exactly makes me an authority on Azure to be able to deliver this video series, and what exactly is platform as a service? So with those two questions to start things off, let's head on over to our slide deck and take a look at what's coming in this video series. Okay, so as I said, this is the Mastering Azure series from Pact Publishing, and in this particular series, we're going to be focusing on platform as a service. My name is Brian Harrison, and I'm a cloud solution architect with Microsoft, and I have been working with Azure for the last seven or eight years with a background in delivering and architecting production-ready, cloud-ready deployments for enterprise customers across numerous different industries with a lot of time focusing in public sector. So you'll hear me mention public sector quite a bit. Spent many years teaching and developing architectures for the cloud, as well as developing solutions for the cloud with experience in many different languages, including .NET, Java, JavaScript, and so on. Now, what exactly is Platform as a Service? Platform as a Service, as defined by Wikipedia, is a category of cloud computing services that provides a platform allowing customers to develop, run, and manage applications without the complexity of building and maintaining the infrastructure typically associated. Now, what exactly does that mean? If you are used to deploying applications into a data center, then you are used to being requested for sizing of virtual machines or even potentially hardware if you're still using hardware. And then it is going to be your responsibility to deploy and install all of the necessary software to make that application run. What Platform as a Service does is it abstracts away some of those administrative requirements. For example, in Azure, there is a service called the App Service. And within that App Service, you have the ability to deploy your code directly to the App Service, and it is already set up with an operating system, a specific application server dedicated to the language of your choosing. and provides many of the administrative capabilities that you would think of, but using a portal-based user interface rather than you having to go in and manipulate, say, Java Tomcat configuration files, making it much, much easier for developers to get their code out there and working and available to consumers rather than having to worry about how to build and maintain VMs over time. A second layer of platform as a service is taking that a step further and saying, well, in addition to providing a service where code can be deployed, let's also provide services that be, can be consumed inside of our applications. Things like full text or event messaging, publication and subscription models, things like that, where normally you would have to go out and deploy something along the lines of an Apache Solar for full text indexing or a Kafka-based deployment for event hub type capabilities, those kinds of things, or even Microsoft Service Bus for that matter. Removing that abstraction away, allowing you to just consume the SDKs for those services, now gets you up and running and deploying applications in a much, much easier way, as well as still providing you with a cost-effective deployment model for that application. Now, some of the examples I've already talked about, Full text search is one that we're absolutely going to be discussing. Databases as a service is something that has become very, very popular in the world of platform as a service because there is so many different administrative requirements sometimes behind providing databases as a service depending upon the type of application. And then I also talked about messaging, publication, and subscription. So event hubs or service bus, those kinds of capabilities. Now, with respect to this particular course, we're going to be covering Platform as a Service as a whole within Azure. And I will tell you, having worked at Microsoft now for more than three years, the Platform as a Service capabilities are consistently growing. We are adding more services. We are adding new features to existing services. We are improving, coming out with new versions of existing services, things like that. So some of those services that we'll talk about, Azure App Services, Azure SQL, Azure Search, Service Bus, Event Hubs, Data Factory, Data Catalog, all of these things will be discussed inside of this particular course. And the course will be split up into three major areas. 
First one we'll be focusing on application services, so getting your code deployed out there. Now, for some of you who are developers, you might be asking, well, Brian, where are containers? Where are microservices? And I will be honest, yes, those are part of platform as a service, but they are still very, very new within the scope of Azure. Not all customers are ready to move down that path yet. And I have been told by Pat Publishing that there will be a separate video series to cover containers, DevOps, microservices, things of that nature. Matter of fact, a fellow cloud solution architect friend of mine from Australia is working on just such a video series. We'll then be moving on to databases as a service, not necessarily focusing on SQL relational databases, such as SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres. We will absolutely be discussing those, but we'll also talk about NoSQL databases, things like document-based databases, in-memory key value store databases that are also available as a service inside of Azure. And then lastly, we'll talk about data processing as a service. So providing ETL engine as a service or event messaging as a service, data catalog as a service, Azure search, full text indexing as a service. So there are a number of great capabilities with respect to platform as a service inside of Azure.